OK, as I mentioned, let's talk West Ham, shall we? They are looking to build on from last season's ninth place finish in the Premier League. It'll be interesting uh, how the club will perform because they have a new manager now in the form of Hula Lopetegui, which is a move on from David Moyes. Mm. Moyes took over for his second spell at the club in December of 2019 and guided them to the Europa Conference League success last season, which was their first major trophy for 43 years. Actor and huge West Ham fan Danny Dyer joined Andy Goldstein on Drive this past week and spoke about the Hammers and whether it was the right decision to finally part ways with Moyes. It absolutely was. And I think most West Ham fans, you know, what he brought for us, that bit of glory. You, look, I think we all understand, every football fan knows, unless it's that top six thing, how difficult it is to win a trophy, and especially at West Ham. And it's still, I can't believe we've done it. We, I, I've actually witnessed it in my lifetime, you know what I mean? So, uh, And people will moan about it being a third tier. Tr- it's a trophy. Mm-hmm. It's, a tr- it's, a, it's a tournament, a long tournament throughout the season. And we absolutely smashed it. And it's been it's gone on to be proved that any English team that's been in it ain't really got near it. You know what I mean? Villa had a go, couldn't do it. Um, and they done really well last season, if you think about it. So, so, so for that, I love that man. But it, it's so difficult watching that style of football, you know? And all oh, this West Ham way, whatever. I, I, I think West Ham fans want to see, see West Ham having a go. That was Danny Dyer there on Drive earlier this week, who is still living the West Ham dream in the sense because his daughter is dating Jared Bowen and Jared Bowen scored that winning goal in the (laughs) Europa Conference League final. Um, Let's uh, bring in uh, more of a West Ham perspective on this. Uh, Joining us, it's the journalist and broadcaster, Will Pugh. Will, how are you? Hello, Will. Matt, Cass, how are you getting on? Yeah, Yeah. we're good, Will, we're good. Excellent transition, I must admit, from TalkSport does (laughs) IT and car parking to West Ham transfers. (laughs) (laughs) There was a bit of a meltdown at West Ham last season, so maybe that's why. Tell us, Will, because we know you've uh, got great loyalty towards West Ham. You was very always upbeat about David Moyes. The club is moving on. It's got a new academy set up for next year, 24-25. Mark Noble playing a big part. Then you've got Kenny Brown, academy manager as well. So there's lots of things. Max Kilman's coming to the club and probably a lot more is coming in the Mm. next few weeks. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like you say, Cass, I was very much um, a David Moyes in. I know Danny Dyer saying there that it was absolutely the right time for him to go. His recruitment was so good. If it was down to me and if it wasn't for such widespread negative fan feeling, uh, I would have more than happy. I would have been more than happy if he'd have stayed on for another season. That isn't the case. And I think the appointment of Julian Lopetegui is an excellent one. It's obviously hard to tell, um, you know, but he, he's done well before. He's got an excellent CV and I don't know how much better of an appointment West Ham really could have made. So that is positive. Transfer-wise, we had a good start. Like you say, uh, Luis Guilherme coming in mm. as well from uh, Palmeiras. Max Kilmer, I think, is a great signing. Uh, but anyone who was watching West Ham towards the tail end of last season will tell you that squad needs significantly more investment, various names being mentioned. Mm. Uh, but the one I'm a bit worried about, um, it's in today's paper as well, is um, the N'Golo Kante move. I don't okay. know what you two think about that, but I- I'm not convinced. Great player, one of the greatest players I've ever seen, but it feels like his time may have passed to, uh, you mm. know, to be sort of top level in the Prem. Well, his last season at Chelsea was blighted by injury, wasn't it? And, you know, of a certain age and the type of player and the miles he's put in as a player, you know, he's relentless, up, down, up, down, Uh, how much he could keep still doing that. Yeah, I mean, but obviously the Euros... He was one of some one of the standout performers, really, for France. You might say. Well, he was in the early games. I thought he struggled. I mean, I say he struggled. Now I'm being unfair. I. France weren't a very good team. No, and they didn't have a particularly great uh, midfield. Maybe that's why he. Stand stood out yeah. so so much, but yeah. he is thirty three. And what what is the fee rumored to be about twenty million or so? Yeah, I think around there, twenty million pounds. Yeah, obviously, um, if, where he is in Saudi Arabia at the moment, he's on an obscene amount of money as as most of the players are there, which West Ham wouldn't be able to match. But he's 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 sort of open to the deal, but not not looking to force it through if mm. if if the numbers aren't right. But I mean, thirty three years of age now I don't know I mean the the Calvin Phillips sort of debacle last yeah. season we do need someone in that position I just feel it, it, I don't know it just seems West Ham of old would make a, a transfer like that of mm. someone sort of past their prime who used to play for a good team He's also um, um, got a bit of a tax issue, isn't he, if he comes back? Yes. I think that's yeah, <laughs> maybe an you're, obstacle. You're supposed to be there for two years to then yeah. avoid the tax, but you, there is a way around it, I think, if you go out on loan. 
Oh. Yeah, I think that's, that's the, the, the problem Jordan around. Henderson ended up having, wasn't it, with um, with Ajax? I don't think he ended up getting paid a penny in the end um, yeah. because he left sort of within two years, I think it is. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, look, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure he's desperate to play for West Ham, so he wouldn't mind giving up tens of millions of pounds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another player that's been linked is Aaron Wambasaka. Would you, would you think he'd be a good fit? Uh, you know what, I, it, the, Vladimir Soufal has been one of the unsung heroes of West Ham's recent success since he signed. He cost five million quid, I think four years ago it was now. And he basically epitomised what it was um, to be a David Moyes player, right? He was he would never, ever, ever put in a performance lower than an 8 out of 10. He's been absolutely spectacular. I think he was a bit unfairly treated by West Ham with, uh, by rejecting some of his contract demands, which weren't obscene. Um, and to be fair, most West Ham fans would have considered them reasonable. But for some reason, last season, this view that he's not really quite at it appeared from somewhere I completely disagree with that he's getting on a little bit um, and he's not he, you know he's better going forward than some people give him credit for wan is has not been that at Manchester United has he after they paid an awful lot of money of 60 odd million for mm. him maybe even more than that from Palace um, he, he's, he's an excellent defensive right back isn't he um, and he's okay going forward and I think that's basically what Vladimir Soufal is as well. West Ham do have a habit of that, of improving or making signings in areas where we don't need to buy players, right. but then mm-hmm. leaving huge holes in the squad elsewhere. You know, we had about 1,500 wingers and attacking players last season, mm-hmm. um, but no centre-backs. Will, um, you're quite demanding at the London Stadium. Um, <laughs> expectation is always the big thing. Well, no, you you know, the West Ham fans, you do, yeah. you know, you push this for the, the high limits, which the club don't often get to, but you're pushing yourself. What are your expectations of next season? You think the West Ham faithful will be happy with? Um, well, as you say, Cass, it's hard to talk of the West Ham faithful as one unified body, particularly after last season with Dave Moyes. Um, I... Uh, it, it's strange, really, because everyone who was avidly Moyes out will now will now tell you that they're actually quite comfortable and OK if West Ham finished 12th or 11th, for as long as the football's better. Right. Well, I know from experience that finishing in those sort of positions equals quite a few defeats throughout the season. And I also know through experience uh, that defeats are, at West Ham aren't always taken uh, in particularly good taste. So, if uh, from my perspective, another I thought last season was sort of okay. It, it wasn't great, but it was okay in the end. Could have built, up, could have moved on. Um, I think top half has always got to be the minimum requirement for West Ham now. Really knocking on the door of Europe. Um, I, I hate it when people say, "Oh, I'm, and get to X round in a cup," because all cups are based on the luck of the draw. So. As long as we go, you know, if we do go out of the cups, if we go out to teams who you would, would sort of expect to lose to or not too embarrassing to lose to, but it's got to be top half minimum. Um, but then it depends how long this new style of football takes to stick. Um, some fans are saying that they're willing to give Lopetegui a bit of time, at least a season, to see what's what. But, you know, as we know, if we're languishing in 16th or 17th come Christmas, then all that stuff will go out the window. Will, great to have you back on the show. Thank you. Cheers, no Will. Worries. Speak to you soon. Speak to you soon. That was Will Pugh Cheers. there. A West Ham fan and a journalist and broadcaster. Okay, on the way next, we're going to look at uh, some of the big transfer news in the Premier League. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.